Hi, good evening and welcome to our program, The Path to Success. So if you you are right now working or listening to me, or working this program from maybe your home, your working place, maybe inside of a hospital, I want you to prepare a, a glass of water because by the end of the program, we are going to be saying a special prayer. We're going to be asking God to, to consecrate the water. And this water can be according to your needs. The water can be transformed into medicine in case you're sick, can be transformed into strength if you're feeling powerless, can be transformed into direction if you're watching me right now and if you're lost. The only thing which you need to do is to use your faith because nothing, nothing will work from God without faith. Actually, faith is the only tool that we can please God. There is no way that you can please God without faith. And when you're talking about faith, I'm not talking about your religion title. I'm not talking about the church you attend and what kind of ideas we have about God. Faith is the assurance, is the certainty that the impossible, that something which you don't see, something that you don't feel, something that you don't know how is going to happen, can really take place. That's why this program is for you who wants to live by faith. Because everything we're going to be teaching you tonight, it's about faith. Once you manifest your faith, once you act upon your faith, that's when the impossible becomes possible. Yes? In, in the same way that together in this prayer, we're going to be doing the end of the program, I have no doubt that things in your life will change because all things are possible to those who believe. Right now, I want to show to you testimonies of people who used their faith to change their circumstances. Yes, you're going to see people who, by the power of faith, by the power of faith on God's promises, they have achieved things which before was considered impossible. You're going to see people who they didn't know how they were going to change their circumstances, their situation, but in the moment they have used their faith, things changed. So let's watch, and we're going to come back again here with you, because we have something important to share with you. Depression for me when I was going through it was just not wanting to do anything. Honestly, the smallest thing, it was, it was huge in my mind. It, I just I would talk myself down into not doing things because I was just so down and I wanted to be alone. I didn't want to be around anyone. I didn't want to talk to people. I just wanted to stay in my room under my cover in the dark alone. And now that I've received the Holy Spirit as well, I am free from the past and that doesn't define me. I am no longer depressed. <laughs> I would definitely say when I forced myself to get up and to get dressed and put makeup on, it's like I had a mask on. I was a completely other person in front of friends and family members and co-workers. You know, I would pretend that everything was okay and that I was this happy, happy-go-lucky, nothing going wrong in my life girl. When really, at home, it was just, it was a nightmare. And at my job, what was expected of me was to you know, provide services for the customers, help customers daily, you know, buy products, sell things. It was, it was a requirement of my job, you know, to answer phones. I had to be happy. I had to portray this happy persona. But inside of me, I was just feeling tremendous, tremendous sadness. I, I hated myself. I thought I was ugly. I remember many times having suicidal thoughts going on in my mind. Oh, maybe I could do it this way. Maybe I could, you know, cut myself. Maybe I could swallow a bunch of pills and maybe just, you know, pass out and just die and everything would be over. The abuse that I suffered when I was growing up was physical and verbal abuse from my father. He, he was an alcoholic and he would, every night, he would black out, he would get drunk, he would hit my brother and me, my mom. I had to sit there and watch him 
beat my mom. I had to sit there and watch him fight my brother. I, I literally sometimes would have to protect my mom from my dad. I would have to fight him off of her to get him away. Later on affected my future relationships as well. You know, I, my very first boyfriend that I had, I remember one day where I got home and I could tell he was agitated. I asked him, I sat, I sat down next to him on our bed and I said, what's wrong? You know, what, what's wrong? Tell me. And he just turned around and I could just see like a, a, like a flip switch in him. And I remember he jumped on top of me and he just started choking me so hard. And I, re I remember, I re just remember thinking, you know, like, this is it, I deserve this, this, you know, this, I asked for it, this is it. And I just remember I couldn't breathe. I remember I was so scared, I was trying to, I couldn't speak, I couldn't yell, I was trying to call out for my mom. I just, nothing would come out until finally he stopped. I tried to seek help from a family friend who was actually a psychiatrist, she had a PhD. And I spoke to her a few times, but I felt like the, the meetings we had were pointless. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe meeting new friends, drinking, maybe that would help, but it didn't. I remember just feeling like, that's it. I, I, I need to do something. I need help. I, I need something. I'm, I feel so empty inside. And that was when, at the time, my now husband, he invited me and that's, that's how I found this church. I remember my very first service that I came to, um, they were actually talking about the heart <laughs> and how it's one of the most dangerous things if, if you live by what you feel, your emotions. And I remember obviously, you know, I was, I was depressed. I was living by emotions. I was living by sadness. And I remember the pastor preaching about how you cannot let your emotions overcome. You can't live by feeling. You can't live by emotions. You know, God can help you not feel these things anymore. He can help you be free. The big thing I remember him saying was, God chose you. He chose you. You're here for a reason. And I remember when he said that, I just broke down crying. And I could just feel, feel God's presence there with me. And I knew that I had to stay here. There was, there was something different about this church. I don't want to feel lost anymore. And after some thought and some looking into my life and my past and everything that I had been through, I learned that I have, was guarding, guarding hatred and and feelings from the past against my father once i prayed to god and i forgave him i said out loud i even wrote it down on paper i said dad you know i forgive you i forgive you for all the years of abuse and the hatred <laughs> finally on, on one of my nights of prayer and seeking the Holy Spirit, He finally came. And I just remember it being the best experience. But now I've learned to, to talk with my husband and not scream and yell and, and act irrational. You know, as a mom, I'm more patient. <laughs> I am free from the past. I am free of depression. I am happy. I can wake up in the morning and, and know that God chose me. The testimonies that you just saw, it's not a coincidence. It's not because that person had good luck. Mm -mm -mm. This happened because of faith. Yes, maybe you are watching me and when you talk about faith, what comes into your mind, what comes into your head, it's religion thoughts. Faith has nothing to do with religion. And why not? Because faith is a gift given by God to us. Yes, God has given faith for us to be able to live our lives every single day. I can even tell you 
that without faith would be impossible for us to do anything. Impossible. Right now, I am standing here. I'm using the strength of my leg to be able to hold my body. So it means I have to believe that my legs, my feet, they are strong enough to sustain my body. And this is faith. We call this as natural faith. Yes, the natural faith that everyone has. For example, when you go to work tomorrow, Wednesday, tomorrow morning, when you go to work, you're going to be using your faith. You're going to go to work because you believe by the end of the week or by the end of the month, you're going to get your salary. That's why you go to work. You believe, you have faith that your boss, your manager, your company will pay you back. Otherwise, why are you going to work? Why are you going to leave your house to spend, you know, six, seven, eight hours a day using your physical strength to help someone that in the end of the day will not be paying you. So, faith is the assurance. Faith is the certainty that things will work. But this is the, the natural faith that it's born with our physical body. Yes, this, this faith you, you learn how to develop from a very, very young age. Actually, you start to use this faith when you're a baby. That's why you cry. Every time a baby cries, he cries because he believes that we'll get attention. And from that moment, you start to use this faith for every single area of your life for you to get what you want. But sooner or later, sooner or later in our lifetime, we are going to start to face challenges, problems, circumstances that our natural faith will not be able to solve. There are problems that you are facing right now that your natural faith cannot help you. For example, let's say that you are a doctor, you have studied medicine, you, you, you have faith in the books and the things you learned, but if there is a disease where the medicine that you learn, where the equipment cannot help you, you, you feel like you're stuck, you are unable to progress, you don't know what to do. In this case, you have to start to use the supernatural faith. And the supernatural faith, it's also a gift given by God to those who believe in Him. And that's the biggest difference. That's the difference. The natural faith is a gift from God to mankind, to everyone, believers and not believers. But when we talk about supernatural faith, everything else changes. Because the supernatural faith you can only have in the moment that you believe in what God is saying. That's why you act upon the Word of God, because you believe that what God is saying, He will do, He will fulfill, because He has the power, the ability, and conditions to do what is written there. And this faith you cannot develop at school, you cannot develop supernatural faith by watching movies, by talking to your friends, by going to university. The supernatural faith you can only develop from the Word of God. And that's why it's important for you to attend one of our seminars. If you want to come to the UCKG Health Center or to the Succeeding Life Center, you're going to be able to watch our addresses that we have in Asia and Oceania. You're going to be able to come. I'm talking to you from the Philippines. But if you say, Pastor, I don't live in the Philippines. I live in Hong Kong. I live in Taiwan. I live in, in, in South America, in North America. For sure there is a, a UCKG near to you that you can book for an appointment. You can call. You can even walk in. And you're going to find someone that will be willing to sit down and to show to you, to explain to you what are the actions you can take for you to develop this type of faith, the supernatural faith, the faith that changes circumstances, the faith that changes situations, the faith that makes the impossible to become possible. And that's why I want to show to you more testimonies, more testimonies of people who, by the action of faith, they change circumstances. So let's watch more testimonies that for sure is going to help you to, to develop 
this supernatural faith. Have you cried tears of despair, sorrow, loneliness, wondering how you're going to raise your child alone? I have. I had so many expectations for my life. I thought I would go to university or do what I wanted to do, travel, get married, be happy and have a happy family. But everything, every area of my life, especially my family, was destroyed. And I got to the point that it was just me and I was, in a sense, left holding the baby. The relationship completely broke down. That's when I hit rock bottom. The realization of knowing that I was by myself, I hadn't achieved any of the things that I'd set out to do. And I was now going to bring a child up into the world. Every day my routine was the same, but I got to the point that I was crying every day. It's like inside I was crying out for help and I didn't know what to do. I would cry myself to sleep, I would cry in the mornings, and even if I wasn't physically crying, inside there was so much pain, so much hurt from, from so many things, and now being in this situation I didn't know how to handle. The tears didn't stop for such a long time. So things did change for me. And the change happened when I realized that things could change, that I didn't have to be unhappy. I was invited to a women's meeting and I understood that I could be happy, that although the situation had been so difficult until now, being a single mother wasn't the end of the world, that I could achieve everything that I wanted, but for that to happen, I needed to start with myself. I started to understand the power of prayer. I started to understand what it was to have faith. I started to understand what it is to invest in myself and all those things that had been holding me down, the complexes, the insecurities, I started to understand that I can achieve things and I needed to change my focus from the situation, from my child to myself and to use the faith that I had found to put things and my problems into God's hands. So that was the time that I exchanged my tears of loneliness, sadness, depression for tears of joy. Today I can look at my child and I'm proud. I'm proud to be a mother. I have inner peace. I'm happy with myself. I value myself. So I've definitely exchanged my tears of sorrow for tears of joy. Hello everyone. We are from the Succeed and Life Center Singapore. We are here to invite you to join with us at our powerful and exciting services that are held on Saturdays at 2 p.m. and on Sundays at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. We also have life-changing services on weekdays. And to those who live in Singapore, you can contact us at plus 65 if you are depressed or have suicidal thoughts, if you are in a desperate situation or feeling so lonely in your heart, and if you are suffering from sicknesses, financial worries, or have family or marital problems, you can always count on us. For sure, there is a God who cares for you and will help you to restore your life. We will be here waiting for you. We are located at number 1, Sophia Road, Unit 2425, Level 6, Peace Center, Singapore, 228149. The nearest MRT is at Tobigot. Thank you very much and we look forward to see you soon. God bless you. So when you, when you watch a testimony like this, many thoughts can come into your mind because you say, well, I am a Christian myself. I also, I am a believer. Maybe you even attend a church or part of a congregation. But you don't see things like this happening. And why not? Because it's not enough just to attend a church or to help inside of a denomination or just to be a Christian. If you really want to see impossible things happening in your life, if you really want to be successful, if you want to achieve greater things, you need to apply what the Bible says. 
And one of the teachings of the Bible is written in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, which is very clear, it's a crystal clear advice that God is giving to us. Chapter 5, verse 1. Look what the Bible says. Therefore, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. So here, what is the Bible telling me? What is the Bible saying to you? The Bible is saying that we have to imitate God, to copy God. In other words, to do what God does. If you want to see the same thing that God he does, He can create in people's life, you have to follow God's footsteps. You have to copy God. So most of the time, what is the issue? What's the problem? We tend to imitate those who are near to us. Maybe you, you try to solve your problem, copy, you know, someone's advice you saw on, on Facebook, on the internet, or in a book you read and didn't work. But in the moment you start to copy God, in the moment you start to apply, to do things which God he did. And when I'm talking about God, I'm talking about Jesus himself, because he is the Son of God. And, and he lived in a, in a human physical body. He, he had the same feelings that we have. He, he felt exactly what you feel. But he was able to overcome. Why? Because he didn't let his feelings to take control. So when we talk about God, we're talking about Jesus, the Son of God. So copy his steps. Imitate him. Go and see how did Jesus dealt with situations? How did he overcome challenges? You're going to find out that sometimes Jesus he was talking to the tree. There was a time he was talking to the sea. He was speaking to the waters. <laughs> For us, it sounds crazy, but this is the power of faith. He believed that the water or the tree could hear and obey his voice. And that's what God is expecting us to do. So if you want to accomplish amazing things in your life, do this. Become God imitators. Let's copy. Let's follow the footsteps of Jesus because there nothing will be impossible to you. Okay, so now is the moment of prayer. Prepare your glass of water because I'll be praying. I'll be using the tools that Jesus did. He prayed for people as I'm going to pray for you. Oh Lord, I praise your name. For all of my life, you are the air I breathe, and you raise me up on high. The sound of your voice is sweet and strong within me. This cave behind and arise for heaven's fire. Though the earth has quaked beneath, though storms and fire roar, though dangers all around. Your voice is calm and sure The orbit of the stars And the limits of the seas You set in perfect order And in your arms I'm free There is no fortress, no stronghold, 
that can stand before the power of your voice. No condemnation, nor affliction can stand before a faith that fights in joy. Storms come to a whisper when they hear the voice of the Creator of all, the purest of all things, is your word, the shield of faith that keeps us standing tall. There is no fortress, nor stronghold that can stand before the power of your voice. No condemnation, nor affliction can stand before a faith that fights in joy. Storms come to a when they hear the voice of the Creator of all, the purest of all things, is your word, the shield of faith that keeps us standing tall, the purest of all things. standing tall the shield of faith that keeps us standing tall moments of prayer bring us close to God shut out all your worries of today and let him touch your heart right now. My Lord, in the name of Jesus, right now I'm copying what our Lord Jesus did. He prayed for Jerusalem. He prayed for those who are suffering. He prayed for his disciples. And that's why, my God, I pray. I pray for those who are watching or listening me right now, wherever they are, let the power of this prayer that it's done in Jesus' name to reach those who are sick, to reach those who are in pain, to reach those who are suffering, there where you are, inside of your house, in a working place, in a hospital, inside of a bus, or maybe even in the streets, receive power right now. I stretch out my hands towards you and I bless you. I bless this glass of water and I say to you, this glass is no longer filled with water, but it's filled with power, healing, strength and answer. Be blessed and be free in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. You, you can drink. Drink some of this Spirit of medicine, because now this liquid, it's no longer water, this liquid, it's a miracle for you, okay? It was a pleasure to be here. As you know, every Tuesday we have this program, you can always be connected. And please, make sure that you do what you learned today. Let's follow the footsteps of Jesus. Let's do what he did, because in the same way that he overcame the world, you can overcome too. Have a nice evening. God bless you. Bye-bye.